Let's see who's ready for this morning. Glory to God. Grace and peace be multiplied to you all in Jesus' name. Faith, clean the drunk. Priscilla Oni. Priscilla, thank you. I hear you. You started the G Story Cell Group on the island. In the islands. Thank you so much. Um, so what chapter of the book of Romans are we continuing? Nobody in the book of Romans, chapter what? We're continuing this one in what chapter of the book of Romans, please? What chapter of the book of Romans, please? Who remembers where we stopped? Romans chapter what? Where are we continuing this morning? Remind me if you will, if you can. Where well, Romans chapter four, fantastic. We're going to try it at 7.30 and see if it's a better time for everybody. Um, let's see if it's a better time for everybody. 7.30. Glory to God. Romans chapter 4 this morning. Invite your friends to join in Romans chapter 4 as we were studying this morning. And we're going to quickly make our declaration and go to Romans chapter 4. And then after that, um, we'll do prayer as you go. Make it as precise and uh, precise as possible. Amen. Good morning, Pastor Triple P. It's because of people like you. It's because of people like you. Secret of Eve, at iron we burn your fine cloth this morning. It's because of people like you. Glory to God. All right, let's make our declaration. To look for this declaration this morning. It's serious. Um, hold up as I look for the declaration. I hope I can find it quickly. Then we can go to Romans chapter 4. And they will arise and worship you, give you the praise. Today I am not raised. You are my song. You were the reason I saved this out my son. You my son. So I also have an idea for morning koinonia. Um, brief five to ten minutes worship that requires a studio. Um, brief five to ten minutes worship prayers and then we go into God's word. I, I I keep me your breath. If we have a house where we can build a studio where we can have little worship. It can happen there. I will, I'm gonna work on it and let you guys know. Um, where the worshipers can take turn, set up the worship and then we'll continue from there. So I'm um, I'm exploring the idea of having worship just brief five to ten minutes worship in the morning from like six from like seven thirty to seven forty five just get maybe a noble or a joxy or anybody to come take worship briefly and then we're going to god's word that's what we're looking at and then we're going to so it's like a full-blown 
uh, morning morning not the morning devotion if you know what I mean complete package every day great idea you help me um, keep me in your prayers I'm, th I'm thinking of something and um, I'm going to work on it it's going to work all right now let's make our declaration at the count of three one two three I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus I am the redeemed of the Lord all my sins are forgiven I am passionately loved by God I am powerfully helped by God I am kept and protected by God I enjoy angelic assistance I am irrevocably blessed I am eternally forgiven I am the healed of the Lord I enjoy divine health I have the favor and the wisdom of God I am fruitful I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. And grace is working for me. I'm going to say that one more time. One, two, three, go. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the redeemed of the Lord. All my sins are forgiven. I am passionately loved by God. I am powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. All things are working to get there for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. And grace is working for me. Glory to, glory to God. Glory to God. We are in Romans chapter 4. Father, bless your word in Jesus' name. Open up our eyes to see Jesus and to be blessed by your word this morning in Jesus' matchless name. And everybody said, Amen. What then shall we say? Abraham, our father, has found according to the flesh. Yeah. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accredited. It was imputed to him for righteousness. Abraham believed God and what showed up in his account was righteousness. In his spiritual account, that is, was righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. Seven. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. So we're talking about imputing, recording. Blessed is the man whom the Lord will not record sin. That's what he's saying. Verse 9. Does the blessedness then come upon the circumcised only or upon the circumcised also? For we say that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. Faith was credited to Abraham for righteousness. How then was it accounted how then was he credited while he was circumcised or uncircumcised not while 
circumcised, but while uncircumcised. That means Abraham became righteous before circumcision. It was not circumcision that made Abraham righteous. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of faith, which he had while still uncircumcised. That he might be the father of all those who believe, though they are uncircumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. 12. And the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of the faith, which our father Abraham had while he still circumcised. Verse 13, for the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seeds through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. The way you inherit anything from God is through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect. Because the law brings about wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace. It is of faith that it might be according to grace. So when you see something that is of faith, it is born out of grace. When you see something that is faith movement, it is born out of grace. So therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to to grace. No law, no sin. It is law that gives birth to sin. Yeah? So that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who believed God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which are not, which do not exist as though they did. They did. Your mom's name is Grace and she gave birth to faith. Glory to God. I see you. Who contrary to hope, in hope believed so that they, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendant be. 19. Stay with me. And not being weak in faith. See the New Testament account of Abraham. Not being weak in faith. He did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strengthened with faith, giving glory to God. King James says he staggered not. Well, you and I know the story that he did not just stagger, he backflipped. He, he did some Olympics there. But when Jesus died on the cross, he edited their life that when the New Testament is writing their testimony, he removes their flaws. That is the power of God's grace. So to end, he says, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. 22, and being fully convinced that what he had promised he also was able to perform. You know what the Spirit of God just whispered to me? Some of us will finally see Jesus. The way he will describe us will be very short. Wendy, my beloved daughter, full of faith and the Holy Ghost, full of love in your heart, 
oh wendy the righteousness of god in christ jesus the one that reminds me of my son for you are just like my son in his behavior in his attribute oh my wendy oh my sophia oh faith oh you are so righteous you are, you'll be wondering god you sure god you sure mm. Especially people like timeless, they come. God, you sure? It's your cycle, just the shy. <laughs> That's how God will be describing you. Because He calls you in the light of Christ. He sees you in the light of Christ. It's high time you began seeing yourself like God sees you. It's high time you began seeing yourself like God sees you. Oh, my Natasia. Oh, my God full of God's grace. Oh, you're so pure. You're just like Jesus. My God, you look like me. You have all my attributes. That's how God will be describing you. I don't know what you will do that time. So, start seeing yourself through the lenses of Abba so that you start behaving like what you have seen. I did some more the one who finished LFC in good grades, the one who's never late, who gives powerfully to the ministry, who oh, are this one, oh, Rekia, oh, my lovely Rekia, oh, my Didier, and full of grace, full of love, oh, Elizabeth, oh, Elizabeth, oh, come, come embrace me, thank you, you'll be wondering, huh? Jesus, you did not see the other part, and he will know what you are saying. Then he will say to you, Oh, did I not mention to you that all your sins and iniquities I will remember no more? Oh, I have no record of what you did wrong. Look at what you did right. Thank you for being like me. The other day you prayed in church. Oh, that was me. And you prayed. The other day you did God remember all your... Because the, the Old Testament takes record of your flaws. The New Testament takes record of your faith. It is your faith that will be shouting. That's how God was. So, the day God begin, no condemnation. He sees you as Christ. You just say, God, say you divine me. Oh, God, you divine me. Say, oh, he will tell you, oh, Rekia, I know the wine you at all. I know the wine you. This is how I have seen you. How did you see yourself, Rekia? Oh, you didn't, did you see, you didn't see yourself like this from the day you got saved. This is how I have been seeing you. Were you doing something else that I did not know? This is how I've been seeing you. I'm telling you, when you this is how, oh, David Martin, oh my God, oh, the righteousness man, oh, the giver of God's grace, oh, thank you. That's how you'll be saying. This is how he would see you. So you, from now, start seeing yourself the way Christ sees you. Shall we just, you hug him, you will hug him, you will whip you. And you'll be saying, oh, that's how I've only seen you. You'll not be looking at yourself with bombastic bad eye. That, ah, so all this time, I should have been seeing myself like that to be behaving like he is. So this is showing you the lenses of the New Testament. It's different from the lenses of the Old Testament. Some of you think when you see God, you say, hmm. Amen. Oh, wow. Mm. If not for my grace, where you see, where you for day. Oh, wow. Okay, David Okoye. Oh, wow. Okay, oh. You still make a shot. Mm. This life no balance, oh. This life no balance at all, oh. Eh? Hmm. Mm. 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 Ah, hey. Jesus, thank you. Because I don't plan to wait this one for hell before sin. So, uh, Becky, uh, this is really serious. Oh, my grace is working. Oh, my grace. Clean the clits. Can you imagine? See, clits make them. Hey, Jesus, you try. That's how you think, Jesus. You think that's how God will behave it?
You think that's how God will be behaving? Like Tom Atkins. <laughs> I remember that your video shoot that year. Hey, Jesus. What have you not done for these people? No. Seeing is believing and behaving. Once you see, believing is seeing and behaving. So take it back. It's believing that will make you see right and behave right. You see what I'm saying? This is how God would... See, no, I'm serious now. No, how many of you... Are you... Abraham slept with his housemaid. In Mac and give him the level. He became the born arm. Evidence. Ishmael. See 19, 19, and being not weak in faith, he did not consider his body dead already since he was about a hundred years and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory. When it happened. The New Testament is a faith-finding document. That is how God will see you. You see, that's how God, that's how, that's how God sees you. So, from this morning, start seeing yourself as righteous. Perhaps, if you start seeing yourself, you start behaving like that when you start seeing yourself like that. Pifle is a pastor that doesn't preach condemnation because the Bible doesn't preach condemnation. Let's just make it clear. Because the Bible has no chapter for condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation. Your believing, I've said it in London church, is a matter of life and death. It's a matter of life and death. Your believing comes, where is this church safe? Number four, Oriwu Street, off Lekki, Ekwe Express Road, Petrocam Philly Station, go right, you see the church. You start seeing our banners on the street, that will bring you to church. There is nothing in the scripture that preaches condemnation. So even when we stagger in faith, God still sees us as righteous. That's what I'm talking about because he doesn't want us to see ourselves like that. I don't know if you guys are understanding what I'm trying to say to you this morning. I just hope somebody gets it. Even when you stagger in faith, he doesn't see your flaws. Didn't you hear through, during the conference? the things I've been saying. Conference, conference was revision. He never corrects the believer through his mistakes. He always corrects the believer through what? Your position in Christ. Know ye not. Know ye not. Start seeing yourself as he sees you. How can you say this about Abraham? How? How do you say this about Abraham? And you people documented it. He was trying to show us something. Read Hebrews 11. Moses who ran for Egypt. The Bible says Moses refused to deal with the, with the nonsense of Egypt. Rather to suffer with, with the righteous. That's how Moses left Egypt. Are you people serious? Moses that killed somebody that they wanted to kill in Iran. He said he refused to be involved with the nonsense in Egypt rather to suffer with the righteous people. So Moses forsook Egypt. Moses did not forsake any Egypt. Moses ran away from Egypt because he killed somebody. But the New Testament account removes his flaws and shows us his strength. Edited the message. So some of the some of the flaws in Funto, um, Tosin and Co. That you when God wants to tell you your flaws, eh, He will not tell you Funto. I rem this is the day you messed up. Oh. The day you messed up. Oh. Let me show you, tell you how God will tell you Funto. I remember that day that the devil was trying to mess you up, and you arose and declared and the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh Funto. Oh, I was so excited. I said, see my daughter. You'll be wondering. You didn't see the other part of the movie. You say, no, I didn't see it all. That is the truth. So keep your declarations intact. 
Amadi, can you hear me? Amadi, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I hope you hear me with your spirit. So when you start telling God, and so my divorce, say, no, you divorce. I didn't see that. I just saw that your marriage had crisis and then you arose with my spirit and then you overcame and made your life count. Oh, God has no record of the flaws. God has, hey, I'll be merciful to your righteousness and their sins and iniquities. I will remember no more. Moses escaped as a fugitive. But see the way Hebrews, this. go and read Hebrews chapter 11. So the day, that day you messed up, gong gong, that, that you mess up that nobody knows. The way God will tell you the mess up, it will shock you. Oh, I saw you that day. That lady came and you were, they were trying to pull you down. And then you arose and declared you had the righteousness. Oh, I saw you like Jesus who knew no sin but became sin. That you might be made the righteousness of God. I saw the righteousness of God at work within you. Oh, then Jesus will hug you. You will just be crying in there because you know that, ah, this person has really, truly no record of your mess. You are the redeemed of the Lord. So once you start seeing, um, she's taking so much time this morning. Let's close. Once you start seeing yourself like that, you start behaving properly. You start seeing yourself like that, you start behaving properly. And that will affect everything that concerns you. The lenses of the cross. The lenses of the cross. The lenses. All your sins are forgiven. So, madam, all you, so how is he going to talk to you through the sins that he has forgiven? So, are you understanding the reckless, the promiscuity of God's love? The no boundary of God's love? Can you see now? The lenses of the cross, not the lenses of your flaws. You, that, start seeing yourself like that. Some of you, and Jesus will tell you, oh, it's how you kept yourself and you were not touched. And you, you'll be wondering, ah, ah. He not see the abortion. He not see tears. I said, no, it's how you kept yourself from me and remained steadfast, unmovable, abounding. Oh, the right. Uh -huh. I'm 21, I'm done. I'm being fully convinced that he had promised that what he had promised, rather, he was also able to perform. 22 and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness so it did not matter Ngozi listen to me it did not matter faith listen to me it does it didn't matter how many times he fell down in unbelief as long as he stood up in faith he just kept counting it didn't matter how many times he fell and dropped in unbelief as long as he stood up in faith that's what God counted. And therefore, it was accounted unto him for the fact that he, he continued and believed God. End of discussion. He didn't lose faith. He remained in faith, remained believing. Now, it was not written for his sake only, alone, that it was imputed to him. He's talking to you too. Now, the reason they documented this Oh, I, I just hope these people are following you. The reason that thing was documented was not for him alone, was for both of us. All of us here. Yeah. 23. It was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. Who is seeing verse 23 now? Who is seeing verse 23? Who is seeing verse 23? Who is seeing verse 23 now? 
Hey, now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. So watch this. Funto, watch this. The way he treated Abraham by editing his life is the way he treats us. That's what he's showing us here. It is the way he treated Abraham. That is the way he will treat us. Are you with me? The same way and life he, he treated Abraham, the bias, the blood bias. It is also imputed to us who believe in Christ. Who was delivered up because of our offenses? Now he's not explained how it happened. He died for your sins. He resurrected for your justification. Hey, he died for your sins and resurrected for justification. So his death canceled your sins. His resurrection gave you a brand new start. What a savior. He died for your sins. It is the resurrection that did the addicting. You didn't hear me. He died for your sins, but it's the resurrection that edited it. The same measure, the same thing. We didn't just write this in Romans chapter 4 for Abraham. We are writing it because of you too. So that you know that the way I treated Abraham is the way I'm treating you. You know the story in, in Genesis, but you are seeing a different report in Romans in the same way. Your genesis doesn't count when you come to the romance of the blood. It's all right. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. I'm done teaching this one. I think I'm liking this 7.30 before 8 o'clock or latest. 10 after 8, we're all back to work. And we can enjoy the day. I'm thinking of having people like Pastor Noble or Joxy just take worship for five minutes before we start sharing God's words that will become a, a complete package every morning. That's what. I'm in page 32, declaration 10 this morning. The 10th declaration, page 32. The 10th declaration this morning, page 32. The 10th declaration this morning, page 32. The tenth declaration this morning. Glory to God. Glory to God. Declaration 32. Your genesis doesn't count when you come into the romance of the blood. Did you hear what I said? Your genesis doesn't count when you come into the romance of the blood. So what you did, no. Your genesis doesn't count when you come into the romance of the blood. Because through the romance of the blood, you come into the revelation of the finished work. Hi. Your genesis doesn't count when you come into the romance of the blood. And when you see the romance of the blood, it shows you the revelation of the Father. Your genesis doesn't count when you come into the romance of the blood. And when you come into the romance of the blood, it shows you the revelation of Abba. p -flow, God bless you, sir. Thank you, Jesus, for p -flow. Amen. Your genesis doesn't count, Abraham, when you come into the romance of the blood. When you come into the romance of the blood, God sees you through the revelation of Abba. Oh, my daughter. Good morning, sir. Can I wear this for the wedding tomorrow? Yes, yes. Go tell your mommy. I'm, I'm coming. My boss. Go, go tell mommy I'm coming. Eh? All right. I love you, baby. Okay. Ro um, declaration. Ah, Susan. Declaration 10, page 32. Page 32. Isaiah 12, verse 3. With joy shall I draw water from the wells of salvation. 
exhortation, his joy is a strong weapon of the believer in the well of salvation where all the blessings reside in Christ Jesus. You have just one fetcher. Joy. Choose to be joyful always because with joy shall the believer draw from the wells of salvation. So joy is a fetcher. Your fetcher is as important as your well. Your fetcher is as important as your well. Today I declare that God is good and merciful and his mercy endures forever. I declare that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I declare that I decree and declare that I have joy. I have the joy of the Lord. I declare that I am not depressed. I am not controlled by my moods. I have joy. I decree and declare that you are not depressed. You are not controlled by your moods. You have joy. Some of you need to deal with that mood swing. It's just the way I am. Today I'm not just... Mm -mm -mm. You have joy. Joy overrides every mood swing. The joy of the Lord overrides every mood swing. The joy of the Lord overrides every mood swing. I'm not a bitter person. I decree you're not a bitter person. You are not a sad soul. You have joy. I decree you're not a bitter person. You don't have a sad soul. You have joy. Do you understand that some of you just look very moody all the time, say it's just the way I am? No, no, that's not who you are. See, through the lenses of the cross, you have joy, joy. You're not a bitter person, you're not a sad soul, you have joy. You exude the joy of the Lord. When I enter a place, joy has entered. I declare that the joy of the Lord is my strength. My atmosphere is charged with the spirit of joy. I am a carrier of joy. I am a giver of joy. Joy flows through me in the name of Jesus. I prophesy you are a carrier of joy, you are a giver of joy, and joy flows through you. The Lord has turned your morning into dancing and singing. I take off every garment of mourning and heaviness of your life, and I put the garment of joy and rejoicing in the name of Jesus. I like that. DDNN is full of joy. Somebody write your name and say, "My, I am full of joy. If you are joy, say joy is full of joy because there are a lot of people who they, who they call joy, but they are full of bitterness. Amen. Say, write it. I am full of joy. You understand? I am full of joy. You can make it there. I am full of joy. With joy, uh, it is with joy we activate the benefits from the wells of salvation. I prophesy. I take off the garment of mourning and heaviness and I put on the garment of joy and rejoicing in the name of Jesus. I put on the garment of joy and rejoicing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree your life is full of joy and it is so in the matchless name of of Jesus, I decree joy, 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 joy in every area. Joy, 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 joy in every area. Joy, 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 joy. You carry joy. You be joy. You exude joy. You carry joy. You everywhere you go, joy has come. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, put your name. I am full of joy. Kemi is full of joy. I am full of joy. Joy, joy, joy in every area of my life. Joy in Jesus' matchless name. And everybody said, hey, hey, people of God, listen to me carefully. Tomorrow morning, I'm here for 7.30. Share the word. Share the word. The time has changed. It's 7.30. Um, so the people, so you all can get to work on time and, you know, face the business of the day. Can you imagine 7.30 to like 8.15, we are done for the five minutes. I'm also exploring music, uh, just a brief time of worship. And then we're going to... Um, teaching of the word, yeah, we, we, we're coming there, we have a very beautiful, rich experience every morning, glory to God, I speak God's grace upon this month of June, I decree testimonies on every side, is your month full of joy, in the name of Jesus, I decree it is a month full of joy, this month you would experience joy, you will see thanksgiving and rejoicing in every area of your life. This month you will see joy, miracles, thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. And God is going to multiply you. You will not be small. You will be great. The multiplier's anointing is upon your life. The multiplier's anointing is upon your life. The multiplier's anointing is upon your life. In Jesus' much less name, amen and amen. Get you guys, get your family members to wake up on time tomorrow morning, 70, 7.30. The time has changed. I think it's good for a lot of people. So we are one seventy today, which is a good thing. We continue tomorrow um, um, for 7.30. Have a flourishing day and a flourishing month ahead of you with great grace.
Blessings.